My name is Michael Eliason. I'm here on behalf of Western Sales to talk to you about the 70 series of combines from John Deere. The 70 series combines ran from 2008 until 2011, and they had a couple of updates throughout the years. Starting at the front of the combine with our feeder house, you see that we have a three strand feeder chain. Uh, originally, they came from factory with a level land setup and a contour master option. In 2011, that was changed to be a base equipment contour master feature, but you did have the option to deduct that and not have that feature on your combine. The 70 series combines continued with the use of the single point connector with a 31 pin electrical connector that we saw at the end of the 60 series. We had our five hydraulic connections and our electrical connection all done with one, uh, with one connection. When you're doing your connection on this, there is a lock on the side of it that you have to pull out before you pull the handle down. When you pull the handle down, if you look at your feeder house, you'll see that there is pins that extend as I pull this handle down. If you're feeling resistance on there, it's likely that the header is not aligned properly with these pins and you'll need to readjust your header to get those pins lined up properly before you can uh, pull your handle down. If you force it, there's a shear bolt located in this position that will break that you will then have to replace. There is spares of the shear bolt located at the back of this single point connector on the green plate. To disconnect your header, once again, you have to pull your lock and then you can lift up the lever and it again will retract your pins and let your header come free from your combine. When you're connecting these together, make sure that both sides of the plate are clean. Otherwise, you'll be forcing dirt into these couplers and cutting seals in there, which will cause leaks. On the front corner of your feeder house is your reverser gearbox. The reverser uses a 460 synthetic gear oil to lubricate everything inside of it. And it has a dipstick located on the top of the gear case that also has a breather incorporated into it. To double check your oil level in your gear case, you'll need to lower your feeder hose so that the front plate of the feeder hose is perfectly up, uh, straight up and down 90 degrees to level. And then you will remove the dipstick and there'll be a cross hatch section on the dipstick that you want to make sure the oil level is in. On the left hand side of the comm line behind your wheels, you're going to find that you have a pump located here. This is a belt driven pump and it is for the real drive on your header. There is a grease point on the back side of the pump that is a 400 hour interval. In front of the pump, we have a spring tensioner for the belt that drives the pump. It is a spring tensioner and has a notch cut out on a gauge. When you're tensioning it, you want to make sure that the washer against the spring is inside of that notch. On the 70 series combines, a three speed transmission was the base equipment when they came out new in 2008. In 2009, we came out with the ProDrive transmission in the 9870 combines. The ProDrive transmission is our two speed automatic shifting transmission that gives you better control in crop. In 2010, we extended that ProDrive transmission to be available in the 9770s as well. In 2009, we also made a change in our auto track equipment to make it so that it was included in the base. Prior to that, it was an option. In 2008, we redesigned our cab to have better operator controls and a more intuitive display system for being able to see what was happening with our combine as we're operating in the field. From your cab access, there is a, a green door on your right hand side. Behind this door, you will find that you have a brake fluid reservoir, a windshield washer fluid reservoir, and a filter. This filter is for your cab and it is everything to do with your blower system. If you find that your blower system is not pushing air or your air conditioning is not cold, it's likely that this 
air filter is plugged up. To uh, access it, you'll turn this handle and pull out this entire door, and you'll find that there's a fair bit of dust and, and debris built up in there. Vacuum out the entire housing, replace your filter, and put the uh, door back in place. When you're putting it in, you have to make sure that you seal it properly so that the seals in there do not have leaks. If you over tension it, you can also cause leaks through deformation of the door. Also located in the door on the right hand side of your cab access point is a dipstick for your counter shaft gear case. You can see that this dipstick is a pull handle. On the left hand side of our combine is our primary counter shaft gear case. As I showed you already, our dipstick is accessed from up by the cab. This countershaft gear case uses the same 460 gear oil as our reverser gear case. It also incorporates our electric clutch for our header engage and disengage. Because it is the electromagnetic clutch, it is recommended that you engage your header only at low throttle. Our unloading auger drive system uses this chain drive here with a spring tensioner on it to make sure that our chain is in good condition. Unlike most of our spring tensioners, this one does not have the notch cut out of it. In this one, we want the nut side of our washer to be level with this gauge. Also in here, we have our gear case for driving our vertical auger, which is what uh, supplies our unloading auger. On this, there is a grease point directly above this cross shaft that's very difficult to see. And you basically have to reach up there and find it with your finger before you're able to grease it. That is a 400 hour grease interval on that gear shaft. In this area as well, we have our clean out doors for between crops and end of season. It's recommended that you clean that out regularly to avoid having any rotten grain build up in there to prevent any rust and corrosion. There's also a third door on the back side that is also used for cleaning out and two more on the right hand side of the combine that I'll show you out as well. With our unloading auger system, we do have a shear bolt located on the sprockets here as a safety for the system. If you happen to uh, wreck the shear bolt, there is spares located back in this area. The times where we see the shear bolt fail most commonly is when we're augering peas with the cross augers and our hopper covers being in the upper position. It is recommended that for peas and other hard augering crops that you lower those um, that you lower those auger covers to throttle back the amount of grain able to enter the augers to prevent you from having any issues. The John Deere Combine uses a two-speed rotor that has a gear case to adjust between high and low speed and also enables you to go into neutral. To adjust between which gear you're in with the gear case, you use this handle. It slides in and out inside of a channel located in here. This channel has a one N and a two cut into the guide to help you understand which position you're in. When you want to adjust it, right now I'm in two and I want to go to one, which is low, I would push in. And if it doesn't want to move, I would give this a little bit of a movement back and forth with my hand to give myself some play. And that makes it easier to move that handle in and out. These combines use a rotor that has two stages of use. The front section is our threshing section, which is located behind these two doors. And this is where our concaves are located. We have three different concaves that John Deere makes, small wire, large wire, and round bar, and all three are used depending on the crop that you're in. For recommendations on which concave to use in the crops that you're using, please talk to your salesman. Moving behind the concaves, we get into our separating section, which is behind three doors in here. Our separating section uses tines instead of threshing elements, and all it's trying to do is fluff up the crop so that we can have our grain fall out of our straw and down into our cleaning area. One of the maintenance points you're going to see with these combines is your hydraulic filters. One of them is located behind this door and is easily accessible, and they are changed at a 400 hour interval. The other uh, hydraulic filters are located further back above your rear wheel and up in your engine compartments. 
With our threshing system, our concave is adjusted for different heights using this sector gear setup. With this, we have two shear bolts located in the system and some spares located just below. Those shear bolts protect you in case you ingest something such as a rock or something else undesirable in your field, in which case the two shear bolts will break and this sector gear, which is actually two pieces, will split and it'll let your concave drop to the full open. To replace your shear bolts, you're gonna to need to use something to pry your concaves up a little bit to align your holes to put your new shear bolts back in. On the left-hand side of your combine, right in front of your rear wheel, you're gonna find this row of switches. The first two switches are for lights. The first one is for lights inside of the body of the combine for an, on your shoe. The second one is for lights underneath your golding doors. The third switch is for raising and lowering your chopper. To use it, you're gonna to have to pull the switch out towards yourself and then raise it or lower, depending on which way you want your chopper to go. If you raise your chopper to full height, there are mechanical locks that will engage to hold it up there as a safety. If you would like to lower your chopper from that position, you will have to manually disengage those locks before you try lowering it or you will bend them. The next two switches are for adjusting your chaffer and your sieve. And when you're adjusting them, there's an inspection door here that you can open up to be able to visually see what's going on and potentially measure the actual gap for yourself. With the introduction of the 70 series combines, John Deere introduced the Dynaflow 2 cleaning shoe in 2008. This is an improved shoe that increases efficiency across the width of the shoe. This shield located on the left-hand side of the combine will tend to build up with debris behind it. There is a belt drive system behind it and you must make sure to keep this area clear of debris our chopper drive system is a single belt drive system on the back left hand side. It uses a spring tensioner that has a gauge on it that has a notch cut out. Just like the rest of our spring tensioners like this, you want to make sure that your washer is located inside of that notch. With the belt itself, to adjust it between high and low speed, we would need to lift our chopper and then move our belt over whichever way we want to get into high and low. If we were wanting to drop straw, we'll need to raise our chopper. We'll need to remove our belt from the bottom shiv. And on the top, we'll need to remove the belt and place it onto the guards over and above the shiv to make sure that we don't have the belt get caught in the shiv and get burnt up. Also located directly above this is the second of our three hydraulic filters. On the bottom of the drive system for the chopper, the guard that goes over this has a tendency to build up debris. So that's another spot that you have to watch for and make sure that you're cleaning the debris out of on a regular basis. For our unloading augers, John Deere introduced the 26 foot option in 2010. So this combine is not equipped with the 26 foot, but if you were curious what to look for, if you look on the tube, of the auger itself, there'll be a flange where two pieces of tubing are bolted together. And that would indicate to you that that is a 26 foot unloading auger instead of the shorter 22 and a half. A maintenance item on any machine is gonna be your fuel system. When you need to do any maintenance, you need to shut off the supply from your tank. We have a ball valve located at the bottom of the tank so that when we go to change our filters or clean out our sediment bowl, we do not have any fuel siphoning out of the tank into the lines when we have the system opened up. When you're done your maintenance, you can open up your ball valve again and then turn on your key to the run position and the system will self prime. You do not need to use any sort of a hand priming pump to get your fuel system fully filled. When you're harvesting your crop, if you're harvesting corn, you're going to need to adjust your crop deflector handle here to be into the corn position. If you are not harvest, harvesting corn, then you'll leave it in the wheat position. And all this is doing is moving a, is moving a door on the inside 
to protect your chopper knives. While doing maintenance on your fuel system, you will have to inspect your sediment bowl on a regular basis. If you're seeing anything building up in the bottom portion of your sediment bowl, it's time to do some maintenance. Close off your ball valve that we talked about earlier. Remove the sediment bowl, clean it out, reinstall it, and then open up your ball valve so that you have fuel supply again. Maintenance on your rear spindle is fairly simple. You have two grease points on the actual spindle, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then you have one for your wheel bearing. You also have one on your ball joints on the tie rod. When you're looking to do your greasing on your combine, there's gonna be a decal located on each side of the combine. This one is on the right hand side and is on your battery box. With this decal, it's gonna show you locations of grease points and service intervals for doing the greasing. There's one grease point on here that isn't always obvious. And that's this 400 hour grease point here. That one is located behind this bulkhead and up on this bearing up here. With your clean grain and tailings elevators, you do have to make sure that you have your elevator chains tensioned properly. To do this, you'll need to loosen off these four bolts holding the flange in place on each elevator and then use the top bolt to actually do your tensioning. When you're tensioning them, you want the chain to be able to be pulled side to side on the sprocket, but not be able to pull it away from the sprocket. On the right hand side of the combine, there are a number of spring tensioners to make sure that your belts are all tight. The first one is pretty obvious right here. There's also one hidden behind the clean grain elevator. And then there's another one that's hidden right in this area and two more located up here. With each one of them, they have the gauge with the notch cutouts and you wanna make sure that you're tensioning them so that the washer is in the notch. For your tailings elevator drive, your slip clutch is located right here. And it does have a grease point on the shaft on the back side of this shift. That grease point needs to be greased anytime that your slip clutch is slipping. If you don't have your clutch slipping, you're probably okay not greasing it right away. Uh, there's a recommended interval on that of 50 hours. But if you're slipping often, make sure to grease it more often. But also with the drive, we have a chain at this end that uses a rubber block to do the actual tensioning of the chain. This chain does not like to be tight. You can tension it to right now. And after about two hours of separator drive, it is probably going to be loose again. On the right hand side of the feeder house is your drive chain. It is very important to keep this drive chain tensioned properly. When you reverse your feeder house, the slack and tension side of the chain will reverse. And if your, ten and if your chain is not tensioned properly, then this will cause a slapping against your guide shear for your chain. If your chain is loose when you reverse it and that chain starts flapping, it can damage the actual guide itself. So make sure that you're tensioning it using your two different tensioning sections here to give yourself as much tension as possible. Behind this shield is the slip clutch for the right hand drive chain. That slip clutch has a grease point on it. With that grease, make sure you're not putting more than one shot per year in there. Otherwise, you can hydraulically lock the slip clutch and cause yourself damage. Your feeder chain tensioner is located here. There's one on the right hand side and one on the left hand side. When you're tensioning this feeder chain, you have to be able to access the door at the top of the feeder house and look inside of the feeder house itself to be able to adjust the feeder chain. This is the same system as was used on the previous model of Collins. In 2009, John Deere came out with the 4x4 feeder house that has a pivoting mid-floor design. When they did this, 
they redesigned the tensioning system on this chain and went to a spring tensioning system instead. On the right-hand side of the combine is the tensioner for the feed accelerator drive. You use this arm to tension or remove tension from the belt that drives your feed accelerator. To remove the tension, you lift your handle, pull to the side and let it drop. The only reason you're gonna do this is to change your speed on your feed accelerator. There's a two speed drive, there's a high and a low range. It is recommended that you match your range on your rotor with your feed accelerator. So if your rotor's in high, you put your feed accelerator in high and vice versa. If you're not sure which is high and low, there is a deco located right beside your tensioning arm that lets you know which one to put the belt on to get high and low speed. When you're done adjusting your speed, retension your belt and continue on your day. In 2010, John Deere started including beacon lights and base equipment on the 70 series combines. These beacon lights were used as a signal for combine operators to green cart operators or green truck drivers to tell them when the hopper was getting to three quarters full and full so that they could more efficiently manage the unloading time of a combine. There's a stone trap located at the rear of the feeder house that is opened up on the right hand side of the combine. You use this handle to open up your stone trap and clean it out. It is recommended that you clean out your stone trap on a daily basis at a minimum. If you can stop a couple times a day to clean it out, that works better as well. Service and maintenance in your engine area is fairly basic. You wanna make sure that you're keeping care of your cooling system by periodically inspecting and cleaning your radiator and coolers. You open up these two latches and this door opens up, granting you access to everything. After that, you're able to swing your various rad and coolers out of the way to be able to blow them out efficiently. When you're done, make sure you close things up and lock them in place with these latches so that the seals are well tightened. Other maintenance items in your engine bay include items such as your engine air filter, your coolant level, which is inspected using this surge tank, your fuel filters, an engine oil filter, so two fuel filters and a canister style engine oil filter. Your dipstick for your engine oil is at this cap, which is also your fuel position. And then if you wanted to drain your engine oil, that's what this fault valve down here is for. If you open up that valve, the engine oil will drain to a position just in front of your rear right-hand tire. Also in this area, we have our third hydraulic filter, and we have a dipstick for double checking the fluid level in your main engine gear case. Lastly, we have our main hydraulic reservoir, which has a sight glass on the front of it. Whenever you're checking your hydraulic oil level, make sure that all hydraulic functions are in their rest position. This means your feeder hose is in the lowered position and your unloading auger is in. With the introduction of the 70 series of combines, John Deere also introduced the 13.5 liter engine in the 9870, which replaced the 12.5 liter engine. Inside of your hopper, we have an ability to fold down our bubble up auger by opening up these latches. There is a shock on this side to help take up some of the weight of it so it doesn't fall very fast. When you're in here, this is a good way to inspect the condition of your auger and of your gear case that drives this auger. This gear case does use 8090 gear oil in it. And on the back side of where I'm standing is a dipstick for double checking the oil level in there. 
The diff stick is located below our moisture sensor. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to check while you have this open is on the inside of here is the plunger for the moisture sensor. You wanna make sure that it's in good condition and that it's not gummed up so that it can function properly and give you an accurate reading. Our steering column hasn't changed from the previous series. We still have the ability to have our tilt steering column and our ability to have our telescoping shaft. On the side, we have our turn signals and we have an ether button and a horn button. Above it, we now have our controls for our HVAC system. So we have an on off and the defrost and automatic temperature control setting where we can set for anywhere from 16 to 32 degrees Celsius. Our fan control, which we can put into an auto mode and our radio. Located to the right of this is a mounting point for a 2630 or 2600 display to be able to do our auto track functions.